Hello YouTube viewers. Today I'm doing two things. One is I'm testing out this new open face microphone which is inside my actual helmet to check um, if it picks up my voice without a lot of wind noise. And the second thing is uh, what I'm going to go to today is the local bike place that I normally go to on weekends. It has been raining overnight so I don't know how many people will be there but uh, it's worth having a look, get out of the house for a while. I'm taking the Super Soco. Um, I had it charged up a few days ago to 100% and I haven't used it, so it's not really good to uh, leave the batteries fully charged, the lithium ion batteries. Now speaking of batteries, these are the pouch type batteries and I'll be honest with you, they're hopeless over a longer period of time. So exactly what happened to me, if you charge them up to full charge and then with the intent of going out the next day for a ride and then I had three days of rain. So when I went back to the bike, the batteries were down to 92%. They don't hold their charge, their pouch batteries. Um, on my Suron, uh, which is the uh, Samsung lithium ion batteries, I've had the same thing happen, well, quite a few times, and had it up to 100% charge. I've gone back a week later and it's still 100%. So, yeah, these pouch batteries definitely have a lot to be desired. And I actually wonder if they uh, drop power when you're riding the bike more than the Samsung or Panasonic conventional lithium ion batteries. It's a bit, bit uh, I'm unsure of that, but it's, it's a possibility. I've just got a, a gut feeling that perhaps these pouch batteries aren't what they're made out to be. back out in the sun again I'm in mode 3 today there we go just get down this hill and then you know, we can start the, the main part of the trip
So this was a landslide up here and it actually killed one person and completely wiped their house out. Their house was gone. And uh, so, that, well, obviously it was at the bottom of this mountain, but this is the top part where the landslide started. So the roads closed until they uh, repair the area that was damaged. But as I said, I can actually just get the bike around the park here. It's just here, the landslide went right up from up the top here in the blue sheet right down to the bottom there. And uh, the poor, there was a man lived by himself, a uh, younger guy. And uh, yeah, the mud and, and thousands of tons of soil and everything just wiped out everything. I don't know how long it'll be before they get this road open. But anyhow, we can get past on the, the good old Super Soko Wanderer. It's quite happy to just jump a few sandbags. You saw in my last video about the wanderer's brakes in the wet and I was actually a bit surprised well not a bit surprised I was extremely surprised because I would have expected the designers to actually take this bike out on a normal road and ride it in all weather conditions for testing purposes I can imagine that it was taking it onto a testing track and you know done a range test at a certain speed at a certain temperature and you know done those sort of things that people ask about how far can you go on a charge but I really don't think they tested it long enough in, in you know all weather conditions out on a normal road up and down hills and pouring rain and those sort of things because they would have easily been able to come back and go oh look George these rear discs and they just don't work in the wet we better do something about them they, they just had I don't know they, they just had no idea I don't even know if they actually ride bikes they might all just be brainiacs that do engineering and they've never actually seriously ridden a bike in their life
straight. Let's see how fast we can go. Flat out. Whoa, Jesus. <laughs> Heart attack over. <laughs> down here it will go faster this was a, it's just a slight slope it'll keep rolling down but yeah there's no more power left in the motor Let's see if I can overtake this truck 